Hello and welcome back to East Coast Fiberglass. In today's video, we're going to show you three methods of using our fiberglass repair kit to carry out a fiberglass repair. For method one, we're going to do a very basic non-cosmetic repair. Uh, for method two, we're going to use a body filler to create a smooth finish, which can then be overpainted. And for method three, is that's going to be very similar to the second method, but we're going to use a gel coat to create a gel coat finish rather than a body filler finish. To buy one of our fiberglass repair kits, just go to our website at ecfiberglasssupplies.co.uk uh, and search for repair kit. There's also a link in the video description down below. Uh, and once you're in repair kits, you can choose either a clear fiberglass repair kit or the any color option. In the any color repair kit product, you can see links to the hundreds of RAL and BS colors that are available. Once you decide which color you want, here we're going to choose RAL 6001. Then you just type the colour that you require into the colour option box on the page and then add that to the cart. Once you've added your repair kit to the shopping cart, you can add any other tools or materials that you might need for your repair and check out in the usual way. And if you're ordering in the UK, your order can be with you as soon as the next day. When the kit arrives, here's what you get. One kilogram of polyester resin, two mixing sticks, a one inch brush, a catalyst for the resin, three pairs of latex gloves, a calibrated mixing cup, basic laminating instructions. You also get a meter of chopped strand matting uh, and a meter of surface tissue. This is optional to use, but it's good to improve the appearance so you don't get as much of the rough fiberglass strand appearance that you sometimes see. Fiberglass repair method one. Uh, for this method, in addition to the kit contents, you also need some acetone and 40 grit sandpaper. To begin, simply sand the surface with 40 grit sandpaper, remove the dust and wipe down with acetone. Then take your matting and cut it or tear it to size ready before you begin. Our panel is just over 2mm thick and so we're using 3 layers of matting. To work out how much resin you need to wet out your matting, you just weigh the mat and multiply that figure by 2.5 and that will give you the total in grams of the resin that you require. Next, weigh out your resin and add between 2 and 4% catalyst. The amount you add depends primarily on the working temperature of where you're working. If it's around 15 to 20 degrees C, then you'd add 2% catalyst, i.e. 2 mils to every 100 grams of resin. But if it's colder, for example, below 10 degrees C, then you might add 4% of catalyst. So mix the catalyst well into the resin. And then we're going to apply a layer of resin around the affected area. And now we're ready to add our first layer of fiberglass. So just put that down and then stipple more resin into the glass strands until they are thoroughly wetted out with resin. And then we're going to repeat that process with subsequent layers of matting. Each layer of matting is, needs to be about two inches bigger than the previous layer. Give the repair a good heavy stipple to remove any air and leave that to cure. Fiberglass repair method two. This method, we're going to use a body filler, such as EC42 or UPOL Easy Filler 1. And this is a good method for most automotive repairs. Firstly, you need to assess the damage. In this case, we can see that something has pierced uh, right through the fiberglass and the damage spreads out approximately two inches from the point of impact. There's lots of surface cracks spreading out further from the damaged area uh, but after thorough inspection, we can see that these are just cosmetic cracks to the flow coat and we can remove those later and reapply once the major repair has been fixed. So once we've cut out the affected area, we grind back 
approximately four inches of the surrounding fiberglass and feather the edge inwards. This will allow us to build up the fiberglass and blend into the original laminate thickness. Before we start, we do another check to ensure there's no more cracks or weak areas in the fiberglass to ensure we don't need to cut back any further. When you're happy to proceed, start by blanking off the hole to prevent the fiberglass patches from falling through. Here we're using a very simple method of using glass fibre reinforced parcel tape and we'll show some other methods later in the video. Once we're ready to start, we apply some resin and then a piece of fiberglass mat that fits exactly within the hole. Stipple that in with further resin as before and then we're going to continue with larger pieces just like we did on the previous repair. And we're going to keep going until all the layers are applied and uh, we are level with the original laminate. Once that's cured, we can remove the tape and now we're ready for final filling and fairing. It might be necessary to sand back the repair so there's enough depth to allow for the filler. So we uh, mix the catalyst thoroughly into the filler and then apply that to the hole and then sand back and now that's ready for priming and painting. As you can see, that repair is now uh, smooth and that's ready to be primed and painted. Fiberglass repair method three. Our next repair is uh, very similar to the previous one, but this time we're gonna apply a gel coat finish uh, rather than a filler. The advantage of this is that we'll have a layer of gel coat that's less porous than body filler, and that will protect the fibers underneath from the possibility of water ingress, which is especially important if your repair is going to be used in a marine environment. If you're carrying out a boat repair, it might be better to speak to a marine surveyor or a professional boat builder before you begin especially if your repair is below the waterline. The repairs we're covering in this video are quite basic and don't really cover hull repairs, for which you might actually require an epoxy rather than a polyester resin. Okay, so in addition to the fiberglass kit for this repair, you'll also need gel coat, acetone, a few extra one inch brushes, a small paddle roller, and maybe some sanding discs. We find Abronet grip discs are the best for this. Firstly, we apply a mould release wax to a 5mm piece of melamine coated MDF sheet. Once buffed, we screw this sheet to the gel coated side of the panel. Make sure there's no debris or dust between the board and the panel as you want the tightest fit possible against the original gel coat surface. And when you're ready, mix up a small amount of gel coat with 2-4% to catalyst depending on the temperature, the same as we did with the resin, and then apply the gel coat by brush and leave to cure. It's best to apply a further coat or two to make sure you've got a good thickness that you can then cut back depending on how well you've fitted the melamine board. Next we're going to apply the fiberglass layers just like we did on the previous repair. We're going to apply further layers, each larger than the previous one, like we did on the last repair, but this time we're going to use a consolidating roller to expel any trapped air from each layer of fibreglass that we apply. You can also use the optional surface tissue that's included in the kit if you wish uh, and that will hide the rough fiberglass finish that you often see on the non-cosmetic side of fiberglass panels. 
Leave to cure overnight and then remove the board. It's important not to remove the board until the repairs had at least 24 hours to cure, otherwise the repair might shrink back whilst completing its curing process. Then we are going to countersink each one of our holes. If you don't have a countersink drill bit, uh, just use a larger drill bit but run it in reverse so it doesn't gouge the edges of the gel coat or accidentally drill through. Remove any dust and then wipe the surface down with acetone. And then we're going to fill in each screw hole with a small amount of catalyzed gel coat and carefully point that in using a little pointed tool we've made here from a mixing stick. Once cured, sand down the gel coat until level. Uh, you can even surround the repair with masking tape to protect the original gel coat as much as you can. It's worth noting that even though we're using gel coat, there's very little chance that the new gel coat is going to match the colour of the original gel coat. And the main reason for that is that your original gel coat has had however many years of UV damage, which is going to fade it, and so it's never going to match 100%. As we'll demonstrate here, after polishing, the patch of gel coat we applied will most likely contain tiny micro bubbles from the mixing process. These will in turn show up as tiny micro craters as we cut into the repair. Degassing the gel coat in a degassing chamber before application might be an option to eliminate the air bubbles, but it's not really a practical step for a DIY job. So here we've given our uh, panel a good polish with Ferrecla 100 compound followed by Ferrecla finish compound. We should end up with a really good shine. But you can already see some of those imperfections that we just mentioned. And here close up you can see how the original gel coat surrounding the repair wasn't thick enough to stop us hitting the resin layer underneath and as the white polishing compound has filled the micro craters you can see them quite clearly once washed out the craters will be less noticeable however they'll be more visible once dirt gets into them so it's well worth bearing this in mind when carrying out this type of repair Painting afterwards might still be your best option for a cosmetic repair. We've already covered that you can use tape and even waxed melamine faced board to bridge the hole before fiberglassing. Even scrap laminate flooring has a smooth underside which is ideal. Whichever melamine board you use though it's important to give it at least a light coat of wax. And there are some materials that are self-releasing. You could even cut a piece from the bucket that the kit comes in uh, to bridge the gap and that wouldn't need any waxing at all. It's also flexible, which is useful if you're repairing a curved panel. LDPE plastic is another good option, which is also self-releasing and again, that is flexible. You can use any sort of board covered in parcel tape or even better aluminium tape, bearing in mind the joins in the tape will leave imprints in the repair. However, this is not as an issue and they'll be sanded out during the process. The last repair method can also be used for blanking off old equipment holes in centre consoles, ready for recutting and retrofitting upgraded parts. Thanks for watching today's video. Uh, we hope that's uh, given you some insight and some good instructions on how to use our fiberglass repair kits. There are countless ways to carry out fiberglass and gel coat repairs. Uh, if you've got any better methods or other suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. All the items shown in the video can, as usual, be found on our website at ecfiberglasssupplies.co.uk or just search for East Coast Fiberglass. See you next time. Bye for now.